breathing clean air. And this is a lung of a non-smoker living in Delhi. And this is what happens to our lungs. The particulate matter goes in. We cannot change this filter of our body. You can change a filter on a machine. You cannot change this filter easily. I was at the World Economic Forum in Davos last year. And the reading in Davos outdoors was zero. And at the same time, it was 222 AQI with a PM2.5 of 172 micrograms per cubic meter. Folks, this is carcinogenic. Grade 1 carcinogen as per the World Health Organization. The limit as per WHO is 10 micrograms per cubic meter for our annual average. Delhi's annual average is over 150 micrograms per cubic meter. It's going into our lungs. Smokers, that's your choice, you want to smoke. But everybody else who's a non-smoker, you don't have a choice, but you're being pushed close to 20 cigarettes down your throat, down into your lungs, and there's nothing much you can do about it. I'll just spend very quickly a couple of, a few seconds on this slide. This is a, one of the most important slides, and I can spend a few uh, minutes or even well, 30 minutes on this one, but very quickly. You see the curve on each one of these is very steep up front, and then it flattens out. And what this means is your exposure to particulate matter is at the x-axis. So from 0 to 25 micrograms per cubic meter, you have a steep curve. From 0 to 25 micrograms, you have a steep curve in terms of health effect for cardiovascular IHD, cardiovascular stroke, lower respiratory disease, and lung disease. So ischemic heart disease, cardiovascular stroke, lower respiratory disease, and lung disease from 0 to 25 is a very steep curve. Your risk rates go high. But after that, it flattens. So living in Delhi, you are even beyond this curve because here it stops at 125. And in Delhi, we are at about 250. So you're beyond this curve over here. But even if you were to bring it down to 50 or to 25, your health risks don't come down as much. You need to get it down closer between 0 and 10 for the health risks to start to come down from a PM 2.5 perspective. This is very, very critical. In my bedroom, the PM2.5 is zero. In my office, it is between zero and 10. In my car, it is close to zero. So 90% of my time, my exposure is zero. What is your exposure 90% of the time? That my entire goal is, how do I reduce my exposure to PM2.5, which creates a whole bunch of issues in my entire human body. Which I, it's something that I don't actively go out for. I can't even help it. I don't even know it. I'm breathing it. Just so you know, right here in this room, this is a particle counter, a little different to the earlier reading, but the reading over here is 250,000 particles per liter of air. In Switzerland, where I go frequently for work, the outdoor reading is 20,000 particles per liter of air. We are 10 times higher and it rained this morning. By winter time, this number goes up to over a million particles per liter of air in Delhi. And there's nothing we can do about it, it's going into our lungs. We can't see it, it's invisible, we think it doesn't affect us. We say, oh, we've lived in Delhi all our lives, it doesn't make any difference to me, my lungs are stronger. Oh, we've developed immunity against it. Sorry, if you think you develop immunity against air pollution, each and every one of you should be giving a packet of cigarettes to your children and grandchildren, because what, guess what? That might make their lungs even stronger. But it won't. Air pollution is hurting us every second that we're breathing air with pollutants in it. And we need to do something about it. Carbon dioxide, I talked about it earlier, it's an indicator of elevated level of pollutants, but it leads to headaches, dizziness. That's why you wake up feeling a little bit lethargic. Give me 10 more minutes of sleep, and then I'll wake up to drop my kids to school or my grandkids to school. Harvard says that anything over 800 parts per million of carbon dioxide leads to cognitive ability issues. So you have a classroom with 30 kids, you have high levels of carbon dioxide because you close the classroom, perhaps you have air conditioning over there. How are they going to learn? Cognitive ability it goes up by 101% if your CO2 is below 800 and your other pollutants are in control. We are not doing that in most of our buildings. In the bedroom, it goes up to 3,000. So in that building, in Paharto Business Center, we have 7,000 natural plants which help reduce the carbon dioxide and it stays at under 600 plus parts per million. The three plants that we focus on are the areca palm, the mother-in-law's tongue, and the money plant. Great, all three are brilliant plants at removing various pollutants like carbon dioxide, like formaldehyde, like particulate, not so much particulate matter, but a lot of the other volatile organic compounds. We have large mechanical solutions in that building to remove the particulate matter and other harmful gases that come from outside. But a lot of the indoor pollutants like volatile organic compounds and carbon dioxide are removed by 7,000 of these 
God, gift, God, made, God gifted plants to us. That's the business center. It's the first building in India to get a US Green Building Council LEED Platinum certification. Uh, Indian Green Building Council's Health and Wellbeing Platinum certification also for that building. We're a Bureau of Energy rated five star building. So we maintain every international parameter from a standards and quality perspective, yet we use some of the lowest energy for any building of, that you would find in India. We have a greenhouse on the rooftop of the building with these plants. We clean the air through mechanical systems, we bring it into the greenhouse, it gets oxygenated, in the, oxygenated and it further purified in the greenhouse with the help of these natural plants. And then this air gets piped into every single room in the entire building of 55,000 square feet. So everybody in the building gets a little piece of this greenhouse. You walk into the greenhouse, you take a breath, breath of air in the middle of the most polluted part of any Nehru place, and you go, wow, where am I? This isn't Nehru place, this is not Delhi, this is not India. That's the reaction that most of our visitors have when they come into this greenhouse and they experience what we have done for ourselves. We have now taken this concept to many other people. This is uh, another space in the business center as well for uh, wellness where you can sit over there, read a magazine, work, and it's super green, super clean, super fresh. You feel energetic once you've gone into that space. We publish the results of air quality in our building every single day for the last 28 years. We've invited the ambassadors and the governor and the chief minister and every person that we could get our, get our hands on into our building the day after Diwali, when we know the air is the worst in the Delhi. And we say, come and experience Davos quality air even the day after Diwali. That's what we do. And we report every single parameter that you can imagine, PM10, PM2.5, even PM1, the smaller, even smaller particles that don't even deeper into our lungs and into our organs. Carbon dioxide, ozone, TVOC, sound level, fungal count, heroin count, formaldehyde, chlorine, lead, mercury. We've tested chlorine, lead, mercury, hydrogen sulfide. People living in Noida, your air conditioners don't get warranty because the copper pipe gets corroded within one year. Imagine if copper pipes are getting corroded, it's because of hydrogen sulfide in the air. If it's corroding the copper pipes, what is it doing to our lungs? What we have tested in our building is that air which is low in carbon dioxide and pollutants actually improves your productivity and makes you smarter. There's a 42% probability that your blood oxygen saturation level, SpO2 meter, I'm sure everybody has seen one uh, or seen somebody wearing it in the hospital or at home, simple meter, you put on your finger with infrared and it tells you what is your SpO2 level. Being in our building with low CO2 levels, there's a 42% probability that your blood oxygen saturation levels will go up by 1%. Whereas in other buildings, there's a 39% probability it will come down by 1%. So, huge difference. People come into our building, they feel better by the end of the day. Most other offices, people come into the office by 3 o'clock in the evening, they're tired, they're fatigued, and they're ready to go home looking at the watch parts of the pandemic health of job. And what about your bedroom? This is actually live, not live, but real data from my bedroom. Before I had the perfect solution, I had these readings with a normal air purifier that I bought in the market. The CO2 level in my bedroom hit 2,400 parts per million at night. At 2 a.m. it was 2,200, at 4 a.m. it was 2,400, at 8 a.m. we opened the windows and it came down to 600. The PM2.5, because I had an air purifier in my room, was down to 10, 15, 20, and when we opened in the morning, same time when we started opening the windows, it went up to 30, 40, and it kept going up after that because the windows were open. I found the perfect solution. The CO2 now, 700, 600, all night long stays at 600, and my PM 2.5, the daily average PM 2.5, came down to close to zero micrograms per cubic meter in my bedroom. It's possible. It is possible to get perfect Swiss. That I say I bring Davos to Delhi. I bring the world's best air into Delhi for people who understand it, who want it. And it's possible you can do that. This is how I did it in my room. It's all about positive pressurization with the right filtration to remove all the harmful pollutants from outside that come into your space. And that's what we've been able to achieve. I know I've gone for the past 10 minutes, but thank you very much and I really appreciate your time.